Modern video games have lost something important, social play. I'm sure I'm not the only one with fond memories of going to arcades or LAN parties or gathering around the couch and playing split screen and Goldeneye. To me, games have a greater impact when played face to face rather than faceless, match made entities. So now, while it's tougher to gather around the couch, gathering around the table to play a board game scratches that same itch for me. And while I might have grown out of games like Monopoly and Risk, luckily the board game industry has too. In fact, the industry's been going through a cardboard renaissance, so much that folks are leaving corporate America to go make games for a living. And that's why I want to introduce you to a few of my favorite gateway games. These are games that are easy to dive into, challenging for adults as well as kids, and might help scratch that itch for a more social game night. For example, there's Ticket to Ride, where you're all rail barons trying to expand your railroad network to connect destinations to each other. The rules are simple. When it's your turn, you either draw train cards, use those cards to build new routes and score points, or draw destination cards to decide which routes to build next. And sure, you might not be able to rip your opponent's tracks out of the ground, but with a little clever thinking, you might be able to find a way to disrupt their plans. But if outright aggression is more your style, you might like King of Tokyo a little more. Designed by the same guy that made Magic the Gathering, you're all monsters hell-bent on destroying Tokyo, or being the last monster standing. It's a little like Yahtzee meets King of the Hill. You roll and re-roll dice to punch other monsters, earn victory points, heal up, or gather energy to spend on crazy superpowers. What makes King of Tokyo so cool is that there are two ways to win, and a bunch of different strategies. Do you want to go full aggro, diving into Tokyo and earning 20 victory points before everyone else can kill you? Or would you rather lurk in the shadows, quietly rolling victory points before the rest of the table even notices you're a threat? Or maybe you're going to focus on energy, mutating into a super mega beast with fire-breathing scaly armor, plotting to destroy everyone inside of Tokyo. But not every game is about dominating your opponents. In games like Pandemic, you all win or lose together, playing as a team against the game itself. In this game, you're all CDC operatives trying to find the cure for four deadly diseases before they spread out of control. To find the cure for one disease, you got to get a bunch of cards that match that disease's color. But you can only draw two every turn, and you don't control what you draw. So you got to coordinate with other players to trade cards, all while traveling into the fray, building research stations, and trying to treat the diseases. But once everyone's taken their turns, the game gets one too infecting cities and potentially causing vicious outbreaks if there's too much disease in one particular city. It's one big puzzle that the players have to work together to figure out. But maybe you like a game where not everyone is working together. In Deception, Murder in Hong Kong, players are investigators trying to crack a murder case. But one of the investigators is secretly the murderer themselves, trying to throw players off their trail. And one player is the forensic scientist, a player who knows exactly who the murderer is and how they did it and can only communicate by answering questions the game generates. What's awesome about Deception is that, well, it's really all about the deception. The investigators have a limited number of guesses to figure out the murderer, the weapon, and the evidence. There's very few game mechanics. It's just talking and persuading and manipulating. It's an experience that only works face to face at a table, which brings me full circle. In a world where screens dictate our lives, sometimes it's best to unplug. Video games may have started the social interaction party in the early 2000s, but board games are keeping it alive. If you're like me, you value social interaction and family time, but you have a full-time job and often don't have a lot of excess time to learn new games. You should check out these awesome how to play videos from The Rules Girl. Board games have evolved and I know they have the power to change your life. Yes, board games can change your life. I know they've changed mine. Pick up one of these and give them a try with your family and friends. You will not be disappointed. These are the gateway games that brought me into the board gaming world and I know they could do the same thing for you as well. We have a Facebook group of highly interactive board gamers who are always excited to assimilate newcomers into this rapidly evolving hobby. Follow us on YouTube. We'll dive into more games that I know that you'll love and learn more about this crazy, amazing board gaming world. Thanks for watching and let's play some more board games.